Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Anita Adifi. I wear many hats. I'm the founder of Loud Silences, and this is a blogging platform that seeks to undo the culture of silence on things around mental health, suicide, depression, um, sexual abuse, uh, sexual violence, uh, which I have personally experienced. And so I'm passionate about speaking on these things and just really seeking to undo the culture of silence around them. I'm also the founder of Advanced Time for Full Coaching Company, and this is a company that seeks to help racialized uh, professionals in Canada advance their careers and establish their identities and just live overall fulfilled lives. I wear many hats, like I said, but I'll focus on those two for now because I just want to jump right into what we want to talk about today. So if you are new to this channel, I welcome you. I'm so glad to have you here. I'd be happy to hear how you found me, how you found this channel, and what you've learned so far from being here. If you're um if you've been around um with me for a while now, well thank you for sticking around. <laughs> I really appreciate all the views, the comments, the reach outs. Um it's it's much appreciated. And so today I want to talk about mental health, but specifically I want to talk about mental health for teenagers. You know, it breaks my heart every time I hear people say, well, they're kids. What do they know? Why are they going through depression? You know, what, 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 I mean, especially if you live in Canada, like I do, where parents feel like, well, you're in a land where you're not struggling, you have first world problems. So what really is going on and how can you say that you're, you know, battling mental health? I get it. I speak about this because, um, culturally, I know we don't talk about these things um, from a Christian faith perspective. Let's not even go there. We don't even want to talk about it. I mean, how can you say you are depressed and you call yourself a child of God? Well, let's not get into that conversation. <clears throat> However, I just want to let you know that this is a topic you should not shy away from. There are teenagers who are committing suicide. There are children, even younger than teenage, who have and continue to commit suicide. While you may think they have no problems, the truth is that whatever they think is a problem to them is real enough in their minds for them to think about ending their life. So we need to talk about this. We are going to talk about this. This month is Mental Health um, Awareness Month. And, you know, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, resource you can find on Mental Health Association of Canada's website. Um, there are lots of resources out there. And even on Loud Talents, we, we had shared a blog on um, how to talk to your teens about mental health. So if you have not read that, the link is going to be in the description below. Make sure you grab it and read it because, you know, we've had uh, one of our writers, you know, has beautifully put a piece together on how to guide on how to have the conversation with your teenagers. So please do so. Now, before I jump into anything, why is this, why is it important that we, you know, talk to our teenagers? And I just want to share some interesting statistics with you. Well, maybe not interesting, but sad statistics with you. All right. So, um, I don't know how many of you know this, but suicide is the second leading cause of death amongst people ages 15 to 29. That's a very young age, 15 to 29. Suicide is the second cause, a uh, leading cause of death. That's very sad. That's why you need to talk to your teenagers about mental health. And according to the World Health Organization, one in six people aged 10 to 19 experience mental health problems. All right. And the consequences of mental health are serious. Suicide is just one of them. Depression is another one. It can lead to academic struggles. So some of you that you think your kids are dull, they are not dull. They need help. And believe me, I'm pretty sure that they may have given you tell signs and cry for help, but you're seeing it as it's showing up as maybe rebellion. It's showing up as maybe you know, um, academic struggles and you're thinking, what is wrong with you? Well, can't you be more like Peter? Peter is, you know, number one in his class. Why can't you be more like Peter? Stop it and seek to understand what is going on with my child and find solutions. <clears throat> it can cause to substance abuse, social isolation. It can cause so many things. So it is important that you reach out to your teenagers and have conversations with them. Because here's the thing, and I know this because I work with teenagers, okay? I work with teenagers, just a little bit of context. I work with teenagers and they're a very interesting breed. I love them. People say they're hard to work with, they're hard to deal with. I'd rather deal with a teenager than a five-year-old. Believe me, I'd rather deal with a teenager than even adults. 
quite frankly, you know, but the truth is that they are a breed of people who they don't see themselves as children, but then they're not adults. The world doesn't see them as adults and they don't see themselves as children. So they're in this weird in between where they feel like I should have more autonomy. I should have more independence. And then guess what? They are trying so hard to prove to us why they should have more independence, why they should have more autonomy. And then they go on and try to do all these things without checking in with us. And we're upset because guess what? The child brain in them that hasn't fully developed often ends up doing silly things, you know, or doing things that, you know, on the surface, it appears as how can you do that? And we're upset with them. But those those things only end up fueling the things that we're trying to pull them away from, which falls the things that they are trying to run away from us for. So you see that it's a crazy cycle, really. Anyway, <laughs> I have a child who will soon cross into that side. So believe me, I, I, I know, I know. Anyway, so it's important that we have these conversations with them because on one hand, they're trying to figure it out on their own. On the other hand, they struggle with the same things that even as adults will struggle with, which is the stigma around mental health issues. So they don't want to talk to you about it because they feel like, you know, you might see them as less than, you might think they're less res resilient. And oftentimes we, we insinuate these things without even realizing that we're insinuating them. You know, you throw things like, you know, just snap out of it, get out of it. When you make comments like that, the truth is you're insinuating that you know it's just if he's just deal with it and get over your teenage drama and that won't help anybody <clears throat> and so because of that many of them you know uh, uh, will typically not want to even come out to us so that's where for us as parents as adults in their lives the onus the responsibility lies with us because while we think that they have nothing to worry about let me give you some things that there are for them to worry about racism especially if you're a person of color the truth is that chances are your children have experienced one form of racism or another either at school or anywhere else and they grapple with these things i mean even you as an adult you grapple with it so really think about it if it hurts you they're humans it hurts them being a teenager does not shield you from having feeling pain quite frankly it's probably even it probably even makes it worse so they deal with things like racism. They deal with things like bullying. And I'm not putting bullying and racism together because <laughs> bullying can happen to anybody. And that's the truth. It can happen to them. Some of them, they get discriminated at. Again, these are a little different because racism can also come from parents, as uh, from teachers as much as it does um, from, from children, right? So they experience all of these things and they're trying to internalize some of these things and you will not talk to them about how these things are impacting their mental health. I think you're setting yourself and them up for some serious issues in the future that nobody would like the outcome. So please have the conversation with them. Some of them might be struggling acad academically. Now, some of them are actually, especially for those who have immigrated to Canada, let me speak to you a little bit. Some of them are struggling. Some of you, y'all know how you pull them out of schools and out of whatever countries you moved from to Canada. You didn't even have the conversation with them. You didn't even prep them. Some of you did not even talk to them until they just, you just showed up at school and pulled them out of class and said, we are going to Canada. And 24 hours later, they are seeing themselves in a foreign country. What betide you if you showed up in winter and then they look out the window and it's snow all around and then you just drop them in this situation and expect them to say, go figure. No, they will not figure without your input, without your help. Now, on top of it, depending on what your situation is, chances are that you're hustling to find a new job. You know, things may or may not be lining up as you think. Guess what happens when we're frustrated? We bring it home. Guess what we often would pour it out on? These same kids. And you want them to function perfectly as regular human beings. I'm sorry, but you need to have that conversation with them. I mean, we all know how we deal, right? We, sometimes, not all of us, but we know how we tend to deal. You know, we don't seek their opinion on things. We don't talk to them about those things. And y'all don't come for me. But I mean, if you're willing to engage in a respectful manner, I'm happy to engage. But please don't come for me. <laughs> all right. I just need to tell you, someone needs to say these things, okay? So you know how you've pulled them out and into this country and they are struggling. Now they're struggling. How are you helping them? Because believe it or not, these things impact them 
mentally speaking. They're still evolving. They're still growing. Their brains are still learning how to, you know, uh, um, uh, um, analyze information and put it to good use. And if you're doing these things without their input, without checking in with them, then there's a problem. And so they have to deal with all of these different things. They have to deal with body changes. Hello, women. Women will probably relate to this more than men might. Because every month, your body goes through different things. <laughs> your body goes through different things. And if you've had children, your body is probably never the same as it used to be. And the same thing happens with them. They're going through puberty. They're going through hormonal changes and hormonal you know, fluctuations. And these things actually have impact on people's mental health. So you see that it's not about they have food on their table or they have clothes to wear or they go to church. It's not so much about that. The problem is that oftentimes we leave these things unaddressed because there's a spiritual side to it. I won't even kid you that there isn't. Okay, if you're new here and you don't know, I'm a person of faith, so welcome. If you don't know Jesus, drop a comment, happy to lead you to him. It's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. But I just want to say this. I believe and I know strongly that there are spiritual components to it. But before any demonism sets in anything, chances are that we have opened up gates. And sometimes leaving things unattended to opens up those gates. So if there are preventive things we can do, to arrest the situation before it gets out of hand, then why won't we do it? It's as simple as having a conversation. It's as simple as seeking to understand where they're at. For some of them, sometimes in trying to deal with those things, you know, they may walk into bad company and then someone tells them, hey, try this, it'll calm you down. And then they start to you know, uh, make their way into things like substance abuse. So we really need to have this conversation. It is very important. They're grappling with cultural changes. Cultural changes, you know, it can be a shock. They call it culture shock for a reason. They call it culture shock. Nigerians will say it shock you. It they shock them. They call it culture shock for a reason. So they're grappling with all of these things and all of these things have some measure of impact on their mental health. And so you want to watch out for signs like if they're sleeping too much or they're not sleeping enough. You want to watch for signs like, you know, if they're not on your phones, are they agitated? Whether or not it's not even a phone, are they seeming like they're always agitated, always on the edge? Are they complaining constantly of things like headache and body pains? Because sometimes it's not always physical. It's more mental than it is physical. Are they sneaking around and <laughs> doing things behind your back that you don't know? And, you know, just always having some consistent, suspicious moves. Pay attention. And so it's important that we talk to them about this. Is Like I said, we've put together a beautiful how-to guide on how to have the conversation. Please, if you haven't, go into the link right now um, or after the video. Wait till the end. <laughs> and, and read through and use that to arm yourself. Because I get it is that sometimes some of us don't even know how to have the conversations. But it is important that we have the conversations. So I really want to challenge you because, you know, I mean, look at that statistics. Suicide, second leading cause of death. One in six, you know, children between the ages of 10 to 19 are likely to take their own life. Nobody wants to be in that statistics. And that's the truth. But what if there are things that we can do to prevent us from being in that statistics? And maybe even put those numbers down for good. And it starts with having the conversation. It starts with doing that culture of silence around it. Let's not talk about it. If you if you if you say you're depressed, then something is wrong with you. Look, I'm not anyway, let's not even go there. Okay? Let's not go there. Let's not go there. Because there's also the mindset that oh, everything is about mental health, this, this. Pay attention to every generation. There is something with every generation that seems to be a thing. The thing with this generation that we're dealing with. Yes, unfortunately, has a lot to do with mental health and an identity crisis. Pay attention, people. Wake up. Identity crisis. That's another thing. They're hearing so much, so much, so many confusing conversations are happening. And their brains are trying to process this information. But then they're still kids because their brains cannot effectively 
process that information. There's a reason some people are saying that how can you tell them to decide to change genders and things like that when they can't even process, you know, the consequences of something as simple as taking a, 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 a meth. They can't process the consequence, but you're telling them to process and make decisions for themselves in things as serious as that. There's a reason why people are speaking up about these things, because we all know that they're not fully developed. And that's the kind of, you know, uh, 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 um, information that they have to process in their generation. And we don't want to have the conversations with them. Then we need to wake up. We have to wake up. So it's very important that you talk to them because talking to them can make all the difference in the world. Seek to understand what's going on with them. Sit down with them. There are times that you need to take off the role and hat of a parent and put on the hat of a friend. You will look stupid. It will feel awkward. But do it. I really hope that this helps someone, quite frankly. Um... If there's anything else anybody would like to add, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. So drop it in the comments below. I am happy to always talk about these things because these things are very dear to my heart. If someone had talked to me, I wouldn't have attempted to take my life when I was 17 years old, but I was almost there. But God. Okay? So, and I don't know who's hearing this today. If you're at that place where you feel like my parents don't get me, they don't listen to me, they don't care about me, they do. Maybe they don't know how to talk to you. I want to even talk to teenagers. If you're a teenager watching this, please take the first step and open up to your parents. Don't just assume that they won't understand. Don't just assume that they won't really listen. Now, if you're trying to talk to them and they refuse to listen, call their attention and say, Mom, Dad, I'm really trying to tell you what is going on with me, but it seems as if you're not interested. But I want to be able to open up to you. If that does not catch their attention, well, I'm pretty sure it will. Because no parents ideally will hear that and not take a pause. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I really hope this has helped someone. Um, let me know in the comments and the chat. Don't forget to share this. Don't forget to like it. Don't forget to subscribe. It, <clears throat> excuse me if you haven't already. Um, I appreciate your support all through this years. Thank you so much. God bless you. Take care and talk to a team and you just might save your life. Okay.